everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Chiago. Hello. Hello. Nice. Uh, thanks for having me, Christian. Uh, thank you, it's guys. It's good to have you. And for folks that don't know who you are, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Yeah. So, hi, everybody. My name is Thiago Custódio. I'm originally from Brazil, Sao Paulo, Brazil, actually. But um, I've been living in the U.S. almost three years. I already lived one year in New Zealand. And yeah, this is- Oh, wow, what, where in New Zealand? In Auckland. It's been I love New Zealand. I would move there, but- Amazing country, yeah. It is amazing. I love it as well. I've spent a lot of time, I've explored, I think I've explored more of the South Island than the North Island, but- Yeah, awesome. Very cool. um, I, I would like to spend more time over there, but we, we had to return. My, my wife was missing her family and we, we had to return. Which is why uh, we're not going either. What once you you've got kids and I've got grandkids, you can't exactly. move that. Yeah. You can't move across the, the other side of the planet. It's harder. Yeah, exactly. Maybe it will be a retirement plan. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, so and what do you do? So where where do you work and what do you do? Oh yeah. So um, yeah. So I've been working with .NET since 2004, and I worked with uh, several different projects since then several different technologies. I even uh, worked with SharePoint. Uh, we, we was chatting before the recording. Um, anyway, and it's pretty much what Everybody I do. Everybody has since... their SharePoint experience some sometime in their career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and um, since 2013, more or less, I've been working with Azure and most of the projects I've been working since then, somehow they are running on Azure, yeah. It's pretty much what we I were, decided to focus. Yeah. We were kind of talking about, you know, there's so many different things that are within Azure. Like, so what do you focus on within Azure? Because there, so I work with, uh, so a good friend that I do a number of community activities with, uh, Mike Nelson, who's more on the infrastructure side of the Azure side. And yeah. I even saying that, that's a pretty broad statement. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, what do you focus on? Yeah, so um, most of the projects I've been working, they are web APIs or web-based, and they are running on top of app services. And we are using other things like storage accounts, uh, Cosmos DB or SQL database, as well uh, service bus for messaging and um, heavily using Azure Functions a lot, um, some key vault for secret management. Um, I think those are the, the uh, services that I've been working uh, nowadays. But I, I already worked with Data Factory a few years ago. Uh, what else? I worked with um, Event Hubs as well for one project. Um, but most of the time are the, the, those that I already described. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. interesting. I, I noticed that you also have an MBA. That's kind of an odd thing for somebody that's on the computer science track. So kind of what, what, what inspired you to go that direction? Yeah, that's a, a good, uh, good thing you notice because uh, MBA in Brazil, it's something different. Uh, oh, it's not okay. like uh, business side, but uh, in my case, for example, I have an MBA in software uh, uh, engineering, basically, and we study, um, you know, um, quality attributes, we study design patterns in, in, in dev, we study this kind of things. Uh, and uh, uh, curiosity, many years after I, I finished my, my MBA, I was invited to teach there. And I was teaching until I moved here to US. So um, it, it was a nice thing. <laughs> but uh, I also have plans to start a master uh, degree, but it's you know something that is on my mind. I, I don't know if it will work in the end. Uh, let's see. Uh, if, a company decided to, to pay for me, I'll definitely do, but from my pocket, I don't think it will work in the end. I don't know. You know, I, I, I have the same thing. Like I, I almost started a doctoral program many, many awesome. years ago. I ended up going, uh, I, I was slated to start. I started mm -hmm. working for Microsoft in 2006. 
I had delayed my start twice. I lost my placement. So I would have had to reapply all over again. And I just, I got to the point kind of the similar where I'm like weighing that, I mean, the cost and obviously the time, the family commitment and all exactly. that to go and do that. Yes. I'm like, I don't know that I will get any kind of financial benefit from, exactly. from doing that. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So it's, yeah. Which, what, you know, honestly, that's, that's kind of a good thing for us. I mean, feel like it's mm -hmm. like, if, if you figure you're that you're having success in your career, if it's not really going to add value, you've got to be doing pretty good. I mean, usually the degree, well, for most people, yeah. um, it, it's because you'll see an increase after that. I just don't think even having a PhD, uh, it, maybe it'll be easier to get, uh, you know, to, to write some books to get, uh, you know, but yeah. I, I've already, like you, I, I think you've written a couple books, haven't you? Yeah, I, I have two. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you already have that pattern, it, it's uh, it's actually easier to go and you know, to, to get pick up new book projects. In fact, I get calls all the time from various publishers like, hey, would you be interested in joining on this book? And I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> so well, one thing I learned after this process of writing books is that uh, you need to write a, a book that will last. Otherwise, there is a high chance uh, before you end the, the writing process, it's already outdated. <laughs> and it yeah. happens quite a lot, especially well, if you are focusing on Azure or things in the cloud that change all the time. Plus, yeah. especially within technology, it should be, if you're going to spend that much time, because it's a lot of work to prepare a book. It is. Especially... Yeah. Honestly, I think it's harder to write it with co-authors than just yes. by yourself and you're driving that process. But mm -hmm. it's it's best if you write about something that you're actually leveraging that. I mean, my first book, um, my co-founder and I have a software company. We wrote it. We were both consulting at the time. So we incorporated our book into our consulting practices. Mm -hmm. So we go and teach classes or do consulting and the book sales was incorporated into the fees. You know, it was built in because we would actually leverage our material like training material mm -hmm. or the courseware. Uh, and and it, it just kind of worked out. And, and to your point, later books where we went and wrote things where it, it yeah, it, it, I, I see how now so many authors have moved to the digital format so that mm -hmm. they can constantly update it and not worry right. about so much about it. you can still get the print copies of one version of that but they're really mm -hmm. just kind of an ongoing writing project exactly but this happens in also uh, other industries for example uh, we do have this problem with microsoft documentation as well uh, so some things that are published and you, you are supposed uh, to go there to, to find the latest implementation it's you know, stale. <laughs> they, they have so many pages, so many uh, things to document that uh, it's hard to follow the, the same pace as the engineering team that's constantly adding new features and delivering. It's, it is what it is. We, we need to somehow um, live with that. <laughs> well, you just described like how I entered the technology space. I started as a tech writer, then as a business analyst. Hmm. That was my job was updating all that documentation. It was yes. a, an unforgiving job. It was just constantly endless. Yeah. <laughs> just exactly. ongoing. Well, that's, yeah. yeah, that it's a, like I said, I, 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 for people that want to go out and write a lot of, a lot of friends have written books and more power to them. I know what's involved. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I know how little you get back out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, you know, one in a million that, that does well. In fact, I always talk about how my, one of my favorite authors um, of all time is Orson Scott Card, sci-fi. He had been winning all these awards, mm -hmm. but still had a full-time regular job, a day job, and was wow. writing. So he won all these science fiction awards, had these beloved books that were very successful, but was mm -hmm. still a technical writer for Atari um, back in the early 80s. But he had that day job and it took him a few years of success before he was able to actually make enough to be full-time as a, as a writer. Yeah, it, it's a, it requires a lot of discipline and commitment. Like for example, every day I'll write one page or two or 10, whatever, until it reached some you know, 
points that he can uh, send for review and start publishing. Yeah. Well, Chiago, what was, what was your path to becoming an MVP? That's a good question. And, you know, it, it's something that just happened. Um, back in the day, I think it was 2012 or 13, I was working for a small company and the, the partners and owners of this company, they were MVPs. So somehow I got involved with and uh, they started to invite me to present in the same events that they were presenting. And at the same time, um, or a few years later, maybe 2014 or 2015, something like this, uh, Microsoft was uh, creating the, the first data center in Brazil. And we were working on a project for that particular data center. And I had the opportunity to be a beta tester. And uh, you know, I was interacting a lot with the engineers and they, they call me and we uh, spent time together figuring out things. And anyway, I think this blend of things somehow um, you know, got the attention from the MVP lead and it is how I, I started in the pro, pro, program, sorry. And since then I've been helping a lot at the community. I'm reaching almost 1 million uh, users in the Stack Overflow that somehow they, they visualize my answers and replies. I only focus on, on Azure tag. And besides that, I send emails directly to program, program managers on the services that I, I described earlier, like App Service, Azure Functions. We exchange a lot of emails. Uh, I provide feedback. Somehow they invited me to uh, like what we are doing here at 30 minutes uh, call and I share my screen to, to do some things or they ask my, my feedback on a particular feature and most of the time it takes more than 30 minutes and we start chatting about <laughs> other things. And yeah, I, I think they like these kind of things that I do. I, even though I'm, I'm not super famous as MVP, uh, I think I provide a good feedback for them and it, it is how, how uh, I'm still in the program, I think. You know, that, that's always one of the hardest things um, mm. where uh, you need to have some level of visibility with Microsoft and like the MVP leads and, and people will ask, well, how do you do that? It's like, well, mm -hmm. uh, because it, it's not, hey, I need to go and become, you know, uh, the social uh, uh, famous. Yes. Like that necessarily, hey, there's some people that do that, that are that are recognized and have a lot of followers and they go and do that, that kind of recognition. But exactly. others are, like you said, it's, it's um, you know, that are just very active in the forums that are providing help, that are involved with their regional level with the user group. Um, some people that get very involved with the MTCs and different mm -hmm. events. And so you kind of catch attention of Microsoft people that way. Maybe yeah. there's a number of ways that you can do that that don't have you out there, you know, as, as the, the big name on the stage. At, at an exactly. Event. Yeah, what, what I'd like to highlight is there's no formula, right? But if you, uh, probably you already did this, but if you interview like a hundred different MVPs, uh, somehow there's something that in common. It's passion for technology, passion for community and impact. So for example, as I, I said, I'm not super famous, but one feedback that I gave to the team and they implemented it will affect like thousands or even millions of users, right, of Azure. So this is, uh, you know, uh, somehow it's important. So th th that's the thing I would like to say. So uh, for, for example, as I mentioned, my answers on Stack Overflow, it's almost reaching 1 million users. But there is another MVP that I know in New Zealand, uh, a small country, New Zealand. Uh, he has like 30 million uh, rich people with his answers. And he only focus on, on the identity part. You know what I mean? So uh, anyway, <laughs> again, there, there is no formula, but uh, somehow you need to you know, find your own way and try to combine those, those elements that I, that I described, like passion for technology, for community, and somehow impact multiple people. That's what I would say.
<laughs> I know that that's the hardest thing. One of the things that you said was uh, that I really like, and I advise anybody that has interest. Um, mm -hmm. And even if you have interest, I think this humility is important too, um, where there's a lot of people, you might have the goal, but to recognize that by participating, by doing all these things, by developing these healthy habits, mm -hmm. you're going to get benefits out of that. Whether or not you ever become an MVP, Correct. regardless, Correct. you're going to get benefits from kind of shaping your 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 work life, your technology life uh, around these kind of principles. But one thing that you said about finding mentors as well is so important. And yes, exactly. Yeah, it's that that is key because you do need to have a Microsoft person or an MVP, current MVP, submit your yeah. name now. Um, yeah. But Correct. it's good to have that advice, to have that encouragement. Oh, good point. But not only for that, uh, for example, it is good to have mentor for your career because uh, it will save time and some, sometimes you may think that something is trending when it's not. Like, for example, <laughs> uh, I don't know, some, some product or technology that uh, there's something else that it, we will replace. Or even uh, you, you, it will save you time. For example, uh, one, one thing that I really like is to attend and speak on conferences because uh, I'll be exposed to multiple different topics in one day, for example, or two days. And if I had to stay by myself, all those topics, it will take way more than two days. You know what I mean? And after that, I, I will decide, hey, do, do I need to invest more time on it or, or no? And then I'll plan the next steps. That's um, uh, Good tip that I would like to leave here for your audience. Yeah. I really appreciate this. And, and Jago, for your time and, and uh, great to meet you. And hopefully one of these days we'll be back doing in-person, uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, MVP summits and we'll get to uh, meet up. But for folks that want to find out more about you and follow you, what are the best ways to reach you in social? Yeah, Twitter or like LinkedIn, both on at th.net. That's uh, my alias, and I add everybody, just send a hi, and that's it. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave here, and if you can put in the description, that will be good. Will do. Well, Thiago, it's great, great talking with you, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for having me, uh, and thanks for your time. Wow. Wow.